Hi friends and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be about outlining your novel and planning your novel for NaNoWriMo. Now considering that I film that I'm filming this video about two weeks before NaNoWriMo actually starts and if you're watching this video it probably means that you haven't planned your novel yet or at least a big part of it. Well, I'm here to tell you don't despair. We're going to be keeping things very simple and very basic because if we get too much into detail, literally if you google like how to outline your novel, you'll get like five page articles. Then you get overwhelmed, then you don't do it, then you don't do nano. So we're not going to do any of that. We're going to stick to the most basic of planning and that's really all you need. But right about now you might be thinking, well why do I have to plan my novel for NaNoWriMo? And you might think I can just, you know, write by the seat of my pants. I have tried that in the past. Literally every single time I decide to do nano about a day before it starts and I haven't ever finished. Basically, if you think about it, you're a train and you have 50,000 miles to go and you start off like let's just do this. You don't pack a lunch, uh, you don't restock on fuel, nothing. You just decide to go and then you start off strong. Maybe you write like 5,000 words in the first like day even, but by the end of the first week or like the first 10,000 miles, you're out of fuel, you're out of ideas, you're starving and hungry. And you just decide to get off the train and leave the train in the middle of the track without reaching your destination. Really weird metaphor, I just thought of it. If you think that you can completely just write it, amazing. Like, please don't tell me your secret because I can't and I know a majority of people can't. That being said, I hate planning. So I'm going to do a little bit of a questionnaire for you guys. And I have props for this video. It makes it a lot more fun. When it comes to writing in general, are you a plotter or are you a pantser? What's a plotter? A plotter is someone who meticulously plans their novel scene by scene, chapter by chapter, literally everything, immense detail. Those are planners. Or are you a pantser? Someone who writes by the seat of their pants. You sit down, blank page, you just start writing, huge jumble of words to write, nightmare to edit, but again, your novel can turn out to be surprising, you enjoy writing it maybe because you don't know what's going to happen so it's like you're almost reading it. If you are either one of these, I want you to cross it out in your mind. Do not become a plotter and don't be a pantser for a nano. You will not survive the month with being both of these. Instead, I want you to become a planter. So I did not coin this term. It's pretty well known in the writing community somewhere. So a planter is somebody who plans a rough outline of their novel, but doesn't do it detail by detail. So basically you follow the basic, you know, this shape. You kind of know where your novel's going, but you still have an element of surprise as it might take you completely off the rails, but you have a map to look back to. If you lose steam, you know what's going to happen next. So you're not just battling a blank page because you're out of ideas. The chart that all planters use. And you probably filled out this story map in like third grade. So if you wanted to draw this actually right now, if you have like a notebook or something, this is what it looks like. First you have your exposition right at the beginning. Right there. You have your rising action. Rising action. And of course you have your climax. Climax, falling action, and then your resolution. I am going to change it up a little bit. So our peak and do a bit of like a magnifying glass to it. And we're going to have our climax. So you still have your climax. So this is basically rock bottom. This is the point of no return where you cannot find a way out down here. That is when you have the epiphany, the oh my god, wait moment. So I'm going to write E for epiphany because it's very small. So you're going to have the moment where you win the tournament, seize the trophy, something like that. So I'm just going to write prize. You get the thing you want after the epiphany and then after you obtain what your character wants, that's when you go back into the uh, rapidly falling action. So now that we know that we have our climax, point of no return, epiphany, and then we have our seizing the prize moment and then our rapidly falling action and our resolution. You can then take this and break it into the basic beginning, middle, and end. This is terrible drawing, by the way. To kind of 
take a magnifying glass and go, go a little bit deeper, the call to action happened first. That could be Frodo setting out and leaving the Shire. Harry Potter finding out that he's a wizard from Hagrid. Primrose being chosen as competing in the Hunger Games and Katniss then volunteering as tribute. And then kind of after that, you have them commit to a goal. So they have a call to action and then they have to start making a plan. They kind of outline what they want um, and how they're going to get it. Also within the beginning, you introduce a lot of things. You intro uh, characters, uh, you introduce your setting, and you introduce background info. However, a big mistake that stories make is they just introduce all of these things passively. I think you need to introduce your setting and your characters and any background information while these two things are happening. That's the whole showing versus telling. Especially in the beginning of a book, you want to like grab the reader's attention. Middle, you have your rising action. So a lot of like more complex charts will have this as well. That's your rising action. So you constantly have like like a win and then a fall, a win and then a fall, and it's all rising up to your climax. So this is kind of where a lot of introductions to subplots come in. It's the journey up to the climax. So it's basically your character trying to get what they want, constantly failing to get what they want, and continuing on to try different methods to get what they want. Excuse my atrocious handwriting. Then you get to your climax. Boom, 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 rock bottom. Um, they have tried and failed repeatedly to get what they want. They have been captured by the dragon, are about to be burnt alive at the stake. They are falling off a mountain. Literally, you cannot see a way out of this. That's your climax. And that is also where the middle of your novel ends. I did not write beginning. Okay. Beginning, middle, end. That's where the middle of your novel ends at the climax. Then you get into the end of your novel. So despite this being the largest section on my board, it should really be the smallest and shortest section in real life. So this all happens very quickly. You've spent all of your novel reaching to this moment. So then that's when the epiphany happens. Again, we're going to do E for epiphany. A giant bird comes and swoops them and saves them from breaking their fall off the mountain. A thunderstorm opens up and puts out the stake that they were going to get burnt alive on. Things get pretty good from there. And they get the prize. And then rapidly falling action. Basically, everything that went wrong becomes right. Um, they make up with friends. Subplots are usually resolved here, if there are any. They start on their journey back home, blah, 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 blah. Then you get to the resolution. I don't like this word because you're basically resolving things within the falling action. So I'm actually going to take it out and I saw a chart that said new status quo and I like this because if you can see it's not on the same level as the beginning that's because in a good story things change and they aren't the same at the end even if the character returns home they're not the same you kind of establish a new status quo they've saved a kingdom but the kingdom's not the same you know they've gotten to the treasure chest and now they're rich things are better they sometimes it's not a happily ever after things are worse. That could lead into like a sequel or something. The inter the reintroduction of what it was at the beginning, but what's changed. Hey guys, so it's currently like two days later and I'm just editing and I forgot to film an outro. I hope that video to outline your novel was useful to you. Watching back the footage, I realized that me writing on the whiteboard isn't the best way to like communicate my ideas. So again, I'm sorry you had to suffer through that. Um, I will be presenting my ideas in like a different format in different videos. However, I hope the content and the information was helpful to you for planning your novel. Um, I know I definitely use it to help simplify my novel and stuff. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but it is going to be an advice video. I might do characters next or plotting, but we'll see.
Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. And remember, outline your novel now as you're watching this, or else you'll never do it.